I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith and Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. I'm so pleased that you thought that the lyrics to Wherever I Lay My Hat, That's My Home, were I'm the kind of guy who's always on the road. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I really and thought. And I was staggered when you sent me that live version last week. Because <laughs> uh, that's what we do in our spare time. That's what we do in our spare time. And you, you sent it to me because you wanted me to admire Pino Palladino's trousers, <laughs> and, which were <laughs> remarkable. But the tailoring of the whole band was pretty, pretty rich, <laughs> I thought. I mean, Paul Young's shirts and sort of frilly pirate shirts. <laughs> Yeah, well, he just looks like a good-looking, slim meatloaf. Pino Palladino yes. looks like... You know when someone had stood at the side of the motorway, they've had a crash and someone yeah. wrapped, them up, wrapped them up in a special <laughs> special emergency blanket? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of them. Yeah, very, very cold bass player's legs. Um, but he's very I, thin, so the, the clothes sort of hang off him and you've got no idea they do what the frame really looks like. A bit like, I guess, NBA um, award suits... You've got no yeah. idea what looks beneath. It could just yeah, be a washing least, pole. But at least those NBA players, you know, they're big guys and they're and strong they're and they and they're ripped. So it sort of works with the exceedingly loose <laughs> folds of clothing. But if you're a rake of a bass player like Pino Palladino in the eighties, yeah, it just everything just hangs off you. It's not a good look. There's no form. Know, there's no form at no. all. No, it's just someone throwing a dust sheet over a skeleton. <laughs> throwing a dust sheet over a load of old ornate chairs in a in a house in a stately. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's just, you know when when they throw a dust sheet over a sideboard without moving the ornaments off it first and the candlesticks and things <laughs> in a stately home. It's like that. It's just bits poking out. And you go, what is that? Is that is, is that, that a shoulder bone? What's going on there? What's is that? His guitar? No, he's, he's holding his guitar. It can't be that. No, it's like the, um, third, it's like the back of a third world cow. Um, yes, with the sort of or the um, the Porsche used to refer to the cabriolet hood on earlier nine eleven convertibles as the hungry horse. Yes, because it you could see the ribs that make up the structure of the hood, and it sort of didn't it didn't it was awful form a line with the rear deck. No. Now it does. Hungry horse, but, that's so uh, true. I didn't know that they called horse. it that. Mm. And it's very evocative because you know exactly what they mean straight away. It's, you do. It's better than my third world cow. I would have gone with hungry horse, I think. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a hungry horse. <laughs> um, well, no, the, the, so I'm, I'm the kind of guy who's always on the roam. I suddenly realised that's what the words are. And I was like, roam? Because for years I thought it was, I'm the kind of guy who's always on the run. And I was yeah. like, oh, it's not run, is it? He's saying something else. Yeah. Oh, it's road. And then I was, I saw, always thought, I'm the kind of guy who's always on the road. And I thought, is he talking about being a musician? Because it also makes him sound like a sales rep. It does. I'm the kind of guy who's always, always in a little share On the road. Yeah, it does work with road. Well, it does. Maybe he's one of it, those, it's like my mate Ed, who does an awful lot of um, premium airport taxi runs. Oh, so Paul Young's got a Zafira, and he's yeah. always off to the internationals. Yeah. He doesn't do short journeys; on. he only does the pre book long stuff. Mm. So, but yeah. it's back to back because in order yeah. to make the business case work, cars never switched off. No, exactly, exactly. Paul, <laughs> Paul, Paul Young. I mean, actually, buying a Zafira off Paul Young would probably be all right because he's always kept it running. Oh yeah, um, and it's doing a lot of motorway miles because if he's do, taking people a bit of distance to the airport, yeah. So yeah, it's cars, you know, that it's like a police car. At least it's, it's, it's been it's kept running and you know stretching its legs. They don't but... even shut it off to change the oil. They pour new in at the top <laughs> while they drop the old oil out at the bottom. It's yeah, a real it's, skill. Yeah, like a, once you've nailed it, it's like a blood transfusion. I wonder if anyone's ever done that, like an automotive blood transfusion. Interesting. Can My mate Big John had a, an Austin Cambridge that he couldn't switch off once he'd got it going. For some reason or other, it was an incredible faff to get it going. Ooh. And so he... <laughs> I don't know if you've met John. Um, Big John. He's a, extraordinary adventures in cars, where John's concerned. But so this one I always remember just because he was having to drive from where he lives in Birmingham back to Ipswich, where he's from, in his malfunctioning Austin Cambridge. And he just got it going, and he's like, "Right, it's going. I cannot switch it off." And he used to have to go and fill up with petrol and just leave it oh, running. Oh, with it running, of, you know? Yeah, I've had a car like that, foreign country style. Yeah, and yeah. Um, <laughs> and he he's about to set off Ripswich, and one of his old mates from school 
who lived in like I don't know Cambridge or somewhere I rang him up. She went, "Oh, I'm just split up with my boyfriend." Oh, is it? And he was like, "Oh, oh well, no, well, look, I'm, I'm going to be passing, kind of passing your way. Oh, come, come and meet me in the pub. We'll just go and have a drink and just to talk to." Yeah, he wants to. So she wanted to meet in the pub. So then he's like, "Oh no!" So he took the spare key for his Cambridge with him, got to the pub locked it with the spare key and just left it running in the pub car park no. while he commiserated his friend because it was that or it wouldn't get going again. But I said to him, I was like, John, no. were people not alarmed at this just stationary car just idling in the car park? And he went, no, the B-Series has got a very quiet idle. It, it has. My, my brother's first car was um, was a, was a uh, not an Austin Cambridge, a Morris Oxford. Mm. Um, and it is true, he could get the idle down to about you know four or 500 RPM. But that even so... I can't believe that you couldn't solve the problem rather than spending three times more on fuel just leaving well, it yeah. idling everywhere. I mean, in today's society, he'd be sent to prison for that. Unnecessary idling. That, um, that same Cambridge, I, th- I don't know, John's owned loads of Cambridges, but I think it was the same car, his main one, the one he's still got, that at one point it, the, the driver's window dropped into the driver's door and he had to secure it up with a screwdriver just jammed in the outside oh, window. Oh, so dodgy. So, I know, but then he left it parked like that. Oh, my God, and nobody took it. No. Well, that was another mate of ours, because he went, oh, I've had to leave my car parked with a screwdriver sticking out the thing, and I'm a bit worried. And one of our mates went, what, that someone's going to nick the screwdriver? Yeah. They were really, from memory, um, you're, you're getting me to reminisce about Morris Oxfords and stuff now. Sorry. The, the, the winder handle was really well geared, like two two cranks and the windows mm. from the top to the bottom. It was nicely geared. But um A lot of old cars are like that though, weren't they? And it's yeah. quite a satisfying they're the the absolute opposite <clears throat> of those extremely slow and low geared blinds that I always get annoyed by in holiday cottages that take forever to <laughs> oh, wind up. Yeah they are um, they are, aren't they? You end up crank you feel like you're doing like you know in and you go to the gym and they get you to probably like pull long pieces of rope and stuff like that for upper body strength. It's like yeah. that, but you're just trying to like get up and get out <laughs> just of a trying flat. to let some daylight yeah. into the room. Open so you can a window. Get, get dressed, yeah. Or um, I, um, I was out with a mate last night who was telling me about tile paint because we're interesting guys. And he said it's brilliant because I went, tile paint's crap, isn't it? He went, no, no, not anymore. It's good. Just done. He's just done his, oh, not anymore. his bathroom. He showed me a picture, it looked good, but he went, no, there's a thing you add to it. It's not just paint, you add this other stuff to it, I think might be that what what helps it to It's nail you know, varnish. Work. Ah. It's basically it? nail varnish. I think so, but it might be yeah. wrong. But he said the instructions, he looked at the instructions, it said, add this stuff and then stir for five minutes. Oh, so, you, it, so, he so went, it needs Uh-oh. a reaction. It, it, okay. Better, yeah, but he was like, better do this properly. Don't want to muck it up. So he set a timer on his phone. He said, have you tried stirring something for five minutes? It's really hard work. Uh, slash boring. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Slash boring. But he didn't want to stop because he didn't want to screw up his tile paint. He wanted to do the job right. And um, and so he did. He stirred it for five minutes, which I admired his precision. I think I'd have probably just sort of guesstimated. Oh, but. a lot of people would have just done that. Like, a bit like my son when I say you need to like brush your teeth for two minutes. And oh, I, yeah. I will stand behind the door outside just to check. And his two minutes is, is 40 seconds. And I go, you really got to start wearing a watch. Come on, Wes. This is ridiculous. This sense of time is out of completely out of kilter. Oh, yeah. I know I know something that last podcast I forgot to mention. Mm. Um, I got to drive the Mercedes, finally, the, the Mercedes EQS. Did you? Yeah, I did. I borrowed one for four days, I think. Mm-hmm. And I was very excited about it. And there's a lot. A lot going on in that car, an awful lot going Mm. on. Um, Busy, technological beast it is. Did it have the full-width screen stuff going on? Yeah, yeah, the sort of home cinema madness in the dash. But Mm. uh, do you know what? Um, There was a a, a lot lot to enjoy. Range is incredible, EV range. Is it? What are we talking about? Oh, like uh, 400 and something miles, 430 miles I think I got, or... A lot, a lot. But probably the worst brakes in any new car in recent memory, I would say. Really? To the point where I was going to phone Mercedes up and just double-check that that car wasn't faulty. And I've I've compared my notes with a couple of other journalists, and it's true. They are really... I mean, I nearly had a full crash in it. Because well, as in they don't work? They are so vague, and you're putting your foot... You know when you drive a car with no servo? 
Mm. So you're being a bit more physical on the pedal. I was doing yeah. I, I was doing that, and I was at the end of the pedal, and there was still no what? sign of proper bite. No. Holy shit, that's yeah. no good. No, it was really not good because I nearly understeered my way into a into a traffic island thing. <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, it was. Well, so is that is that because they're trying to blend as as EVs do regen? rather than actual pads gripping discs for a lot of the braking, and then they'll, the, the old-fashioned braking system will come in yeah. as and when required. But they're trying to, they try and blend the two, and some people seem to be better at it than others. Yeah, I don't know whether it's the blend that's the problem or it's fundamentally underbraked. But it certainly it, it, oh. the transition between coming off the throttle and there's a bit of regen bite here and there, and then you can use the friction brakes, it just didn't mm. seem to work. And I was thinking, this is the flagship car. Yeah, that's not cool. So that's I, no so good, I, yeah, so I jumped straight out of that and got into a, a Ford Puma hybrid because I, I haven't driven a Puma yet. I'm the last one in the world who hasn't. No, I haven't driven a Puma. And I drove the hybrid version. It's got the snappiest brakes in the world. So I went from a car, <laughs> I went from a car where it was felt like some pre-war cable braked old old beauty. I got into the Puma and it nearly left the stage right through the windscreen as soon as I even bra- breathed on the brake pedal. It's like bloody hell. And uh, yeah, and and I have to say, I know everyone raves about the Puma. I uh, I was a bit meh about the whole episode. I have Do to people say. rave about the Puma? Oh, I don't know. People go on and on about the chassis, but you know what? I just uh, I just driven that courtesy car that I mentioned in the previous podcast, the Suzuki SX4. Oh yeah, S-Cross. were you still were you still smitten with that by the time you gave oh, it back? Oh, the the, the 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 lyrical was waxing still. Really? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> were you a lyrical gangster? Yeah, I am. Especially when I'm driving the uh, the S Cross um, all grip <laughs> hi- hybrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. I think I I, I spot a segue um, because talking of rappers, mm. have you seen this Will I Am AMG collab? Oh. That they announced last week. Oh gosh, hang on. Let me let me have a look. It's Will, um, Will I Am AMG. Will I Am has done a one-off car with amg it's called now this works written down but it does not work spoken out loud it's called the will i amg so it's will oh will i am I dot dot g amg yeah which works written down because it's will i am with a g on the end which makes it amg very clever can't say it out aloud because you'd say will i am and it doesn't seem to work <laughs> at all um but uh yeah he's basically oh, no. they, they've given him amg have given him an amg gt four door that car that nobody buys ever mm. oh, uh, so right. i guess they've got spares and he's taken it to uh west coast customs oh gosh why did he do that it, i don't know so he's given it the face of a g-vargan and made it a two door with rear hinge doors why would you make it a two door house. the whole point of that is it's the four door there's already a two door one yeah, you Will goon. Will wasn't paying attention in that meeting, but um, and then the back is basically sort of just seems to be like the 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 normal. I'm looking at it one. now. It's shatting horrible because the front is all boxy like a G wagon, but then it has this long bonnet and yeah. the back is more curvaceous, and it just sort of is all a bit of a mishmash. And you re- suddenly realise why car designers earn their money because this is. Clearly, oh, amateur hour. Uh, hang on, the 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 grill. Oh, sorry, the badge on the on the front grill is the three pointed star, but like the mouth of a bear, like a cartoon oh. bear's face. Yes, because um, it sim. <laughs> I'm reading this. It symbolises the phrase "bear witness," which is the name of a line of limited edition clothes and accessories. Oh gosh, Mercedes say <sighs> could be available online, and at its AMG Mercedes Experience Centre in. Miami uh, sort of makes sense. Good job, now, I'm doesn't it? already sitting down for this. Um, I okay. Do you remember the Maybach Accelero, which is yes. not an ice cream? No. You know, you know, the, which was I, I remember. It, yeah. I, it was a concept, wasn't it? Mm. But a fully functional concept that d- did big skids and all sorts. And it was like a sort of Cruella Deville spec, long bonneted yes. two door sinister thing. It looks yeah. like. It does look like a sort of bad rendition of that from certain angles because the bonnet's really long and it's almost got that SLR side vent in the the back of the wheel. Yes, it has got. It's, I was wondering what that reminded me of. It's a SLR. It's a SLR. 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 
Um, I the, see the issue I have here. I mean, I, the G the G wagon front end on a low slung car is interesting, but it doesn't work. And doesn't work. I think there's history of will I am trying to modify cars that I suggest AMG should have taken into account before giving him a free four door yeah. GT to carve up <laughs> because he's done some appalling things with West Coast Customs. And, yeah. and what annoys me is I think West Coast Customs are capable of really good stuff. And, yeah. But didn't he take he. he I'm trying to remember. He took a VW Beetle and turned it into a DeLorean, or one of the, or the other way round. And you're like, why did you do that? Because you could have just started with the other car. It's yes. an idiotic waste of time. Yeah, it is. It? It's a bit. It's it's like spaghetti bolognese flavored ice cream. You just go. There's no need for this. No, I'm sure he did. If you a- want some spag bol, have some spag bol, or have some ice cream. Don't be silly. Um, oh. I, I I remember that my back. Excelero, not the ice cream, looking yes. really nice. It, and I've just looked it up and actually it's not nice at oh, all. Isn't it not nice at all? <laughs> no, it's not. It's nowhere near as nice as I remember. It's It's got an absolutely appalling... I mean, it really is amateurish. It's got this appalling <laughs> front end that looks like something that Mitsuoka would reject. And then the side is... Is it's not as, as sort of elegantly dramatic as I remember. It's all a bit heavy handed and shite and there's a picture of it on some oh. very bad wheels here. Oh well. That I um Okay, I, I, I feel I don't oh want to look God. at it because I actually remember it quite fondly. Don't look at it. I know. Um, I I really remember this being quite good and it's just simply not. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh, do you know what? Oh, it this... looks like Will I Am's old West Coast Customs DeLorean. I'm just looking at mm. pictures of it. It looks like a Lancia Monte Carlo that's been stung a lot by wasps. <laughs> that's what it looks like. <laughs> it went into its loft. Yes, it, it saw did. a wasp and it thought, "Ooh, strange! What's a wasp doing in here?" Ah! Yeah. And there's a nest, and they all came out at once. <laughs> there's a there was a wasp's nest in my loft, but over winter I they all they either all went away or they all died because I went up there after half a bottle of wine and started jabbing it. But it was all right. <laughs> yeah. See, I saw there was a developing wasp's nest in our shed, and it was just a tiny sort of orb on the roof. Yes, and very I went neat. completely over the top with wasp powder and all sorts of shit. And I swear there was like one wasp in there just going. <laughs> just <making laughs> was it just house- ha- housekeeping ah. for all the other wasps? And like they've yeah, all gone on holiday, so. and you're yeah. going to rain <laughs> down on me. Well, honestly, there was this. This thing was only like the size of a, a squash ball. It wasn't. It wasn't a bit. It was just a little orb. Uh, you couldn't have got more than about four wasps inside it comfortably. And it, it, so, uh, I mean, I don't know how what wasps are like with personal space, but I, I imagine they're not that fussy. But even so, I think I went a bit over the top. I could have just probably sort of flicked it off and trodden on it, and it would have been fine. Yeah. Anyway, um, where were we? On that I don't side know. of things, will um, I am re- being the world's worst car designer. Yeah, I think that Will's Lorian an interesting is absolutely guy. terrible, isn't he? I, I, Will, <laughs> he is, Will's yeah. out there, and I think he's a, he is an interesting, pleasant, quite inspiring guy. I'm, I'm not I'm not just taking him down for the sake of it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I think collaborations with large companies like AMG, I think, is perhaps not a great idea. Um, no, a friend of mine worked with him a while ago. Oh, really? And she was really fond of him. She said he was very nice, quite eccentric, but yeah, he's he he's is. a nice guy. And she liked him a lot. So, yeah, we're not dissing Will I no, Am per se, no, no, but no. just, you know, maybe his efforts in car design are a bit. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I still always, when I see the way he sort of um, separates his name out and punctuates his name, I do think if, if I was. If I was Brian May, say, and I wanted to reinvent myself, it'd be Burr <laughs> E. Ann. <But, laughs> Or something like that, and just go Bri- wrong. Brian A. N. Brian 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 Jonathan. John at Than. I don't know. Oh, what, yes, to it what just end be the A that. in the middle. John mm, at John Than. Than. It just sounds rubbish, though, Richard. Come on, I wouldn't do that, it's would not, I? Idiot. I wouldn't do that. No. What about your smut ith? 
No, I mean that's just ridiculous. People would just like We're just workshopping here, it's fine, it doesn't yes, you? you don't have to okay. commit to your oh, to yeah. your rapping name yet. We're just we're just doing a bit of brainstorming, it's fine. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got slightly claggy slightly claggy. Are you claggy? Yeah, I'm a little claggy. I'm just I'm just a sip of water, hang on. Um I'm a bit claggy. Okay. I went out drinking last night and it was not it was Oh well, did you <laughs> this morning was not pretty. I got yeah. I got I landed at the airport at one in the morning and my sat nav took me the most convoluted route away from the airport I pre- because it's one of those smart sat navs that obviously uses live updates on google maps i thought oh it knows something that i don't and i was very tired and perhaps vulnerable so i just believed it i ended up going to places i've never been over humpback bridges under little really narrow underpasses under railway bridges went to the end of a cul-de-sac what? And then I had to reverse in the dark, and this is when I realised that the my new long-term test car, which I won't reveal yet, um, basically has no reversing lights, or if it does, they don't work. And I accidentally very slowly reversed it into somebody's fence when I was trying to go back <laughs> up a coldie sack. Really slowly, I must have said. Really slowly. Um, you, you slowly reversed into someone's fence. Yeah, because the because I went down a, a dead end road and it was very narrow and there's no street lights and I was it was you know, half one in the morning and I just wanted to get home, so I just crept it yeah. back looking at my mirrors. But there's no reversing yeah. lights. Oh, I couldn't see them. It didn't seem to. You work. should have been in the um, in the new Range Rover because it's got one of the gimmicks slash gadgets it's got is that when you stick it in reverse, it has underlighters. It, it creates a pool of light around the car, so you can reverse in this pool of light for exactly that reason. I mean, it's also got cameras and parking sensors and stuff, but yeah. they clearly it must be something that customers have mentioned. You can see the neighbour's dark spot under there. Yeah, maybe that's it. It's like, I'm so bored of running over my neighbour's cat. I just want to stop. So yeah. yeah, it does a little puddle of light around itself, which um, allows you to reverse oh, gosh. So, yeah. visibility. That, that was bad. It was, it so was you're bad. not going to tell you what your your new long term. I'll tell you next cars. time. I'll tell you next time. I think. Okay. I think give I'll me, give me one clue. It's electric. Okay. Is that vague that enough for you? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's electric. <laughs> okay. It's, um, she lives in a okay. family full of eccentrics. <clears throat> Um, it's a Peugeot 205 Electrique from the 80s. Uh, yeah, I'd, I, it's got like 900 car batteries all I t- scattered I, you know, around I, the interior. I tell you what is was really cool. F- I fully charged it at home, went down to the airport, parked at the airport, and I got out and it, it had 76% charge. And I thought, that's incredible because I can... Uh, and I did when I landed. Like I said, I got home in the really early hours of the morning and I was cross after going down this cul-de-sac and getting a bit... Uh, tangled up um so i did drive quite fast home with no regard mm. for economy mm. um and it didn't matter because i had a big battery and lots of spare yeah. surplus miles and i felt good about that um, did the fence fall over no 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 it just sort of lent on it you know where it sort of gl- okay, it was just a kiss yeah. it was just a kiss richard come on yeah, yeah. come on okay. just a just a tell like a, 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 a bit of creaking yeah there was a creak uh, yeah before. it was just yeah. a little creak and i thought oh bobbins oh yeah but um, I felt I felt vulnerable as soon as I went to the end of the cul de sac. I thought, oh no! And I swear the cul de sac had tapered. I swear it was much narrower at <laughs> one end than the other. But anyway, probably sort of thing an old yeah. person would say in an insurance claim. Yeah. Um, oh, it just leapt out on me. Uh, what the fence? <laughs> oh, I I know what I wanted to talk about last um, cast that I didn't. I decided to have a couple of hours to myself and watched. Gone in sixty seconds with Nicolas Cage the other week, and because uh-huh. I watched that film at, uh, on the cinema when it first came out, and oh. uh, and thought it was quite an exciting film. I mm. think it came out in two thousand, mm-hmm. and yeah. um, th- th- there's a lot there's a lot to like about it. I mean, it's silly, but um, there, there there's a part in it which I. I had to almost turn away from because it made my skin crawl. <laughs> and it's the bit where he assembles the, the, the team to do the big swipe, you know, to do all the boosting or whatever they call it. Yeah. Um, on that one night, you've got to take all the cars in one night, blah, blah, blah. And he, 
he he gets everyone in a circle, tells everyone to shut up, and then plays a little. <laughs> and then and then and then everyone gather around, gather around. Everyone, okay, yeah, Dave, come over here. Everyone, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> then puts on we puts anything, on Low case. Rider. Shut up. Puts on Low Rider by War, and then puts on the worst <laughs> leather jacket I've ever seen, <laughs> and then does this sort of like. Imagine I'm just trying to do it in front of the microphone here. Sort of jerks his hands out like he's playing an organ energetically, yeah. and then and then just pauses in that Nicolas Cage way with mad eyebrows, and then goes, "Yeah, okay, let's go." And then and then that's it. And that it's that it's such an odd, awkward part of the film because the jacket hasn't got any <laughs> creases in it at all to the point where it looks like it it might be made of rigid plastic, <laughs> <laughs> well, like a Lego jacket. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. It's just horrible. those little tabards that you can put on Lego figures that just, it's, it's, but it, it made big. It's exactly um, that, and he does it in front of Angelina Jolie, and I'm thinking, at the time, one of the most attractive women in the world, I would have thought, and mm. you're going to do something quite embarrassing, but you've got to do it within ten feet of Angelina Jolie. I would not be comfortable with that, <laughs> acting or not. <laughs> yeah. I'm just acting this horrible jacket. It's not. It's not mine. Uh, I've, I've just. I was going to search because I don't know what you're talking about. I, I have so little memory of that film. Do you? You um, must must watch it. Must watch it. When you type into Google Nicolas Cage Gone in sixty seconds, uh, one of the prompts that comes up is leather jacket. You're joking. And when you click on it, oh yes, it's not very good. Okay. Okay. It's, yeah. It's because mm. it doesn't look realistically leather, is what I'm. Uh, so <laughs> like someone it's, pressed it's a, it. It's a pleather jacket. <laughs> it's, it's a pleather. Um, is it? Is it sort of a kind of formal sort of cut? It, it looks like he did promo posters for the movie wearing that jacket, leaning on the. the oh, I'm Mustang. sure. I'm sure he did. And and the other problem I have with the film, and look, I'm not going to tear apart a film that was fundamentally just pure entertainment and silliness, but mm. I. Am I allowed to say I just don't? I don't. I really don't like the whole Eleanor, Eleanor thing. It just no, pisses, I don't just either. pisses me off. It's an awful looking. Car. Yeah, it's nobody called it out and just gone. Listen, you've taken a chrome bumper Mustang and you've put just a silly plastic chin guard from an American footballer on it, and it looks awful. Yeah, it just looks. It doesn't awful. match, does it? It doesn't it looks, match. It's like two different eras well together. Funny enough, this photo of Nicolas Cage wearing the bad jacket, leaning on the horrible Eleanor Mustang. <laughs> The car's got he's he's leaning on the front wing and the car's got a little bit of lock on and you can see it's got some very modern sort of tires on it oh. and again that just sort of looks wrong because they're they're a modern you know like, modern fifty five profile or something yeah yeah and somehow it just looks weird because then the the lighting the shot's been lit in such a way that the rear of the car is, is has got a spotlight on it and it, you can see it's an old Mustang. Can we redo that shot then? Can you take a photo of yourself with a leather jacket on, or sitting on a car with the wheels slightly turned? <laughs> oh no, we could. I, could we super- I don't own a leather jacket. Do you own a leather jacket? No, I used to. I think I've got rid of it. Uh, damn. Oh, my, every so often I go, oh, I should get myself a leather jacket, and then I go, uh, uh-uh, middle-aged man. Is that? Is it, it? Is it a bit? I think it is a bit. Or like when a mate of mine went to an event and Nick Knowles turned up in motorcycle leathers. And um, but no, my, but no motorbike. My mate knows Nick Knowles a little bit, and he went over to him and went, "All right, Nick, you come on your bike." And he went, "No." Oh, you're joking! <laughs> why? Why are you wearing a motorcycle jacket? Oh no! <laughs> but Don't because tell me he had a helmet under one arm as well. Well, I, I, I forgot to ask. I would like it if he did. He's just going for a look. You know the way that the the famous car journalist Leonard Setright, LJK Setright, uh, in his later years, and he's writing for Car Magazine, he was quite often pictured in features that he'd written. Uh, sort of standing by a car looking thoughtful but he was always dressed you know sort of like a rabbi basically got the long beard yeah yarmulke the i don't know what it's called uh, forgive me jewish listeners but the vest thing with the strings that comes off it and the vest thing with strings you know what i mean yeah, yeah, the yeah. vest thing with the strings on yeah, it and yeah. and I, I, he was often sort of holding a copy of the torah and things and he just went okay that's you know it's you know, quite devout but apparently he he just used to go through phases of of trying on like sort of running with different looks and in later life as he sort of rediscovered his faith he decided to go all in and basically dress as a rabbi but before that in the 70s he used to just wear tennis whites and carry a tennis racket but there was no evidence that he actually ever went and played <laughs> tennis <You're> just- <laughs> <laughs> so I think Nick Knowles might do that, the biker look, without actually having Hang a motorcycle, on, I ten- don't know. Full tennis gear and a racket, Apparently, never playing. Yeah. Oh my well, gosh, that's Well, this amazing. was the story. Or seldom yeah. playing. 
Seldom play. I mean, even seldom playing is still like just only wear the whites when you're going to play. <laughs> Don't wear them when you're going on the launch. It's like me the wearing gym Strada. gear when I'm just not going to go to the gym very often. I think a lot of people do that though, don't they now? Yeah, there is a like lot it when of you that. see someone in sort of a lot of, like in kind of full gym kit, but they're sitting having a burger or smoking a cigarette or something. You just go, are you going to or from yeah. the gym or neither? <laughs> it's not a good. Um, I had to. I had to share a plane last night with lots of people like that. Yeah. Well, are you coming up from Spain, weren't you? Yeah, Brian Air. Oh gosh. Oh, Brian Air. Yeah, Brian Air. Absolute <sighs> Brian Air. Mm. Yeah. Lots of blokes I, talking non-stop is... about football, wearing wearing <laughs> wearing tops that are a bit too small for them. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, okay. You've reminded me of something good that um, Nick Cage has got a new film out, which apparently is quite good. I think is it it's sort of about him? Yeah, the unbearable weight of massive talent, <clears throat> and it's about him. Since. You know, he play, he's playing himself. I didn't. And it sounds quite funny. Okay. He's playing a sort of, you know, a, a fictionalised version of himself, like, um, I'd like, you know, I, like people do. Like Matt LeBlanc did in um, episodes. Yes. I quite like... Uh, I, 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 I did enjoy my Gone in 60 Seconds revisited. Um, but Low Rider by War is, is a, one of my favourite songs, and it did tarnish it slightly for me with this <laughs> with the sort of awkward silence uh, next to Angelina Jolie um, but I'll let it I'll let it slip this once um, but yeah if, if you get a chance listeners if you have never watched yeah. it or you just go oh I can't remember what it was like it was 20 odd years ago but it does predate I might have said this before it does predate Fast and Furious um, oh yeah so a lot of people go on and on about Fast and Furious being a very influential film when it came out and it and it, of course it, it was and is but gone in sixty seconds. There's a lot of similarities with the whole, like you know, at night going and pinching cars and how all that stuff unravels. Mm. And the way it's shot, I think, is quite similar to F and F. So uh, F and F. F, and F. <laughs> I don't know if anybody calls it that. I, I've never heard it called that before, but I feel that maybe we should uh, we should lobby for this to become Can a we? thing. Can Although we? F and F is F and F also not a supermarket owned brand clothes. Oh, it's is it like Tesco's Tesco own? Or yeah. Well, I think maybe so. that's maybe there you go. Maybe Vin Diesel just wears F and F vests. <laughs> so they're, they're good value. Also, they fit. Now we sort of said last week, not sort of, we did say last week that we were going to try and not swear in the next episode of the podcast huh. i haven't really been keeping a track of whether we have or haven't i don't think i have i don't think i don't so. think i have either and but anyway well we'll we'll see how we get on we had a lot of messages about this from people who'd sort of slightly misinterpreted maybe what what we were saying because i said we should just try and do one so that your mum doesn't keep asking your dad what twat means <laughs> are you, are you, you've gone and said it now <laughs> damn it oh. um but we had loads of people uh in the youtube comments and sending us emails and stuff and on the patreon going don't censor your podcast if people don't want to hear swearing don't listen and don't put don't play in front of your children and stuff like that and uh, so I, I did feel we should say we're not intending to censor it oh, we just no. we try no we try and have a week off swearing but already yeah. i've gone and said the t-word well, so we could, um, we could just carry on with some euphemisms can't we yeah, well, because F and F sounds to me like it's a euphemism for something. It does, you know, like T and A. Yes, uh, it's which funny enough was the name of a kebab shop near I was I lived as a student. T and A, what territorial T and army? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're both territorial and army. Um, yeah, t- oh, God, I was going to say what I thought it stood for, but that would be swearing. I think. Uh, um, well, I don't mind referring to people instead of just calling them an an, an, an effing. Tea or something like that. You could just call them a, yeah. a yeah. complete <laughs> bell ringer or, a, or a similar. You can still say flute as well. Yeah, you can still a say a complete, f- yeah, fleshy flirtist if that's what you want. Um, it's getting a bit ruder, but yeah, yeah. I might stop saying <laughs> F and F though. Just F go, and F's a good. F and F. People go, what's that? Mm-hmm. Don't you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like we should be sponsored Absolute by F and F because that'd be S and S and F and F. That's very convoluted, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only rock and roll but uh, I like it now guys listen, look, look listen guys I'm going to bring movie corner to a close yeah because I want to lead you over to book corner oh uh, because a, a few episodes ago I mentioned uh, David Tuhig the man who led the development of the Alpine A110 amongst other things and I think I said he'd got a book out 
and I might even mention that he sent me a copy. I've got a copy for you as well, by the way, which I'll send to you. Um, but uh, he, yeah, he very kindly shared the book because in the early days of him planning to write it, uh, he got in touch with me through a mutual friend for a little bit of advice on getting a book published. And um, I don't think I said anything helpful, but he managed to get a book deal with um, Veloce Publishing. So as a thank you, he sent me a copy of the book and uh, I've just finished reading it. And it's about uh, three big projects that he had a major role in. The Nissan Qashqai, uh, the Renault Zoe and the Alpine A110. And um, it's it's really interesting. If you want to know how the modern car industry works, it's it's just an uh, an object lesson in the realities of trying to get cars made, which is, oh. for the most part, you know, desperately trying to get things past you know there's the sort of set budgets and and then there's a great i won't spoil it but there's a great anecdote about why the original cash car has a central fog light in the back bumper and it's a it's a brilliant story because <laughs> it makes you realize that even huge car making corporations are not beyond accidentally cocking things up but for the most part you know the main thing they need to do is make sure they can make a car and make profit on it and make it sort of relevant to the market so the cash car uh, adventures are quite interesting from that point of view. Cash car Zoe, adventures. You don't realise how hard it is to make an electric car because they they got you know they got the prototypes running and then they just they, they had all sorts of problems with um, getting them to charge because of all the safety systems because EVs being quite a new frontier. Yeah. Uh, for Renault, they they went sort of as far as they could to make it as safe as they could, and it's got all of these fail safes for sort of situations that would probably never happen like you're charging your zoe in a garage that floods and stuff and but to make sure that people aren't going to electrocute themselves no matter how hard they try try, try yeah it's got all right. these fail safes and trips and 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 fallbacks and all sorts but of course then if you get because public charges are so variable if you get the wrong sort of you know frequency of electricity coming through uh, it'll trip the car, and they had to work really, really hard to sort of refine all this out, including this insane odyssey of taking prototypes into Paris and trying out every single public charger in Paris um, Whoa. to see how it, it played with the car. Um, I won't spoil any more of the stories, um, but it's, it's a very enjoyable read. If you're into cars, if you're fascinated to know how cars are actually made, and the one thing that I took away from it above all else is that, you know, when you see people sort of on social media and things going, oh, I can't believe they haven't made this. I can't believe, you know, Alfa Romeo haven't made the Julia quadrifolio wagon or i can't believe they haven't made a hot hatchback of this i can't believe they haven't replaced this every single time the reason will be because they've crunched the numbers and it simply doesn't make sense mm. and they've gone we've got to spend 100 million euros to make this variant and we reckon it'll sell 400 a year not happening no and and that's the harsh reality of making cars it's a bastard difficult business oh i've sworn again oh Sorry. richard that's two now I it's might a as well very just difficult business wheeling <laughs> swear out the, the will i am's yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if I, I would heartily recommend it. It's called Inside the Machine uh, by David Tuhig, and uh, I think it's it's a very, very interesting insight into the realities of the car-making business. And that is my book that's, report I, uh, for Thank this week. you. Bravo for the book corner. That's, that's really good. Comprehensive review. Well done. I like that. I'm going to grab myself a Well, copy. I will, I'll get you uh, um, I'll get you the copy, your copy, uh, to you, and you can have a read as well. And, uh, and that. And, 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 and all that, and all that, yeah, and all that. Yeah, all that, all that. Oh, yeah, actually, that was, I forgot to say it, all that. I um, I actually went to a VW show on my own. Um, oh. on, I had a day off and went to a car show, sort of just paid to go in like a normal person, walked like around a normal like person. a normal person, didn't take children, didn't have my phone on. Yeah, it was lovely. And... um. The reason why I'm saying this is because it was it's sort of it's a very trad VW show, and I actually went there in a um, a T7 multivan, which I had How on test. The multivan. I like the multivan. The multivan's mm. good. There's lots to like. I like the multivan, but I don't know why I like the multivan. It's because it it's the suggestion of adventure and versatility that turns you on. I suggest. It's the things you could do, even if you end up not doing mm. them. You could do them, and. I've got to say, it drives a lot better than a T6 Transporter because it's not a van, it's a car. So um, it looks like a van, and it's called a van, weirdly, but it's definitely not a van. They shouldn't have called it the multivan because it, I think it almost undersells it. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be doing a review of that on the, the Late Break Show. In fact, it's probably out by the time this 
podcast comes out, I can't even remember my own pissing schedule. Ah, oh, I've sworn. Anyway. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I might, I don't know, I might be in, on VW's. I'm not going to say a swear word. I'm going to say naughty list because I gave the ID for GTX a bit of a stinky review but you, in the Sunday Times. But, you but if you don't want a stinky review, don't give it those absolutely cock awful switches that don't work properly. Would be my advice to VW. But on the other hand, I have just bought one of their products. So you have. I might so I mean, ask like, nicely if I can borrow a multi van because I quite fancy it. Yeah, I, I like the multi van. It's good. Um, it was the Fev as well. Ah. Um, which, Good fev? Yeah, I think it was an all right fev. Um, not how many not, how many miles are you getting on the electro? Well, uh, you know, uh, ambient temperature while I was testing it was about ten to twelve degrees, and I was getting mm. around twenty five miles, tw- okay. twenty three to twenty five miles EV only. Mm-hmm. So to give you an example, I went on a sixty mile journey, and I ended up get- getting seventy nine to the gallon. So that Ooh. just gives you a little indication because it's very hard to suggest the real world MPG and efficiency of cars like this when you're trying to test them. I know. But basically, yeah, yeah you can drive EV only for about you ha- 25 You, you kind of have to let them mark their own homework and then just, you know. You do. You really do. Report that what, report what you find there. But it's but hard, I drove, isn't it? You, without. <clears throat> yeah. I stuck it in kind of VW intelligent hybrid mode that works it out for itself. And I drove it from my house to York and back and it got 49.5 to the gallon. So, how many times have you driven to York recently? I've driven to York a reasonable amount, actually. I'm not even a highwayman. <laughs> either. Is this the Yorvik Viking Centre? Yeah, I know. I you d- keep going up and then finding it shut. Yeah, yeah. I just don't look at the opening times like a complete. <laughs> <dick. I'm just laughs> you always your wife going. Johnny you should check the website. But I don't need to check I the website. That's not authentically Viking. No. I'm just going to get into this hybrid <laughs> Volkswagen and drive to York again. And check my sundial. It's time to leave. <laughs> the time is now, and you can, yeah, you can, you can, you can set your your departure time and preheat it, and all that vajazzle, which is good. Um, mm. So yeah, that's that's cool. But there, oh, there was something else I was going to say. What was it? Uh, I don't know. There was something. Do you else? want me to fill time by reading a, a listener's email that I oh, that tickled me? Go on, tickled me lights. Ian Payne. Now, Ian, I think uh, I recognise Ian's name as a as a long term listener and a, a Twitterist. Uh, he. <laughs> He says, hi, Johnny and Richard. I wasn't going to comment, but as you have mentioned Marillion three times now in the podcast, I thought I'll ask Lucy, their manager, to find out what cars they owned in the 80s. Oh, gosh. I'll pass your details on to her. Well, um, thanks, Ian. I I haven't actually written back to Ian to say, yes, that's a good idea, but I presume he's done it already. I don't know. He, he, He says that he knows Steve Hogarth, who replaced Fish in 1989, has a Mini Cooper. Drummer Ian Mosley has a Range Rover Velar, I think. And uh, Pete Truavas, I don't know, Truavas is it? He's the bass player. He has an old BMW Z3. Not sure what Mark Kelly and Steve Rotheray drive. Oh. But Ian adds, uh, I have a feeling that Fish was not a driver in the 80s. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the 80s he spent in a Fit State 2 drive. Now, I said I'd got a bit of a contact because someone I know knows Fish. Uh, this I can't contact believe of mine featuring, we're talking about Meridian again. Something. Something. Why are we doing Meridian I don't, again? I don't even Listen. know more than one song of theirs. People are going to think that I'm into them, and I'm, I, I promise I'm not. Uh, Ian also, now clearly Ian is a Meridian fan because uh, he said, uh, as for the genre, they're generally regarded as prog rock, also neo prog or art rock. They're not the band you, they think, you think they are. Well, I almost feel like I need to go and listen to some Marillion now. But um, Ian's the bit that tickled me about Ian's email, it, that was the bit I meant to read out before I got bogged down in Marillion again, is um, he says, on a completely different side of things, body parts getting stuck in motorised closures. What? <laughs> when, when were we talking about Oh, it's me shutting my hair in the Ford GT. <laughs> oh, in, yes, of course. Near, near Martin and, Brundle. And my wife getting shut in the sunroof. Yeah, That's yeah, right. I've forgotten about that. Uh, he says, it reminded me of a story involving my late father, who was a press car delivery driver for Subaru Hyundai Isuzu back in the 80s and 90s. Oh. On delivering a car to a journalist's home, which had a tight gateway, he embarked on a bit of dad reversing by sticking his head out of the window to ensure he didn't damage anything. Unfortunately, his forearm must have caught the electric window switch and his head was caught in the window, (laughs) not trapping him, but resulting in a nosebleed which poured down his white shirt. (laughs) (laughs) He had to endure the journey home on the train with a bloodstained shirt. (laughs) My God. What? From an accidental electric window disaster. I presume that, so that must date it back to pre sort of 
you know safety rollbacks but i imagine if you're mashing the switch i don't know how much the the rollback kicks in it's it's when one touch windows came in they they put the rollback the, the rollback it. kicks in it sounds that sounds like some the... sort of foreskin <laughs> analogy <laughs> oh, well that's that's is your, that like um... a v-tech foreskin <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh the rollback. Oh yeah, and when the rollback kicks in, oh yeah, oh hang on, hang on. (laughs) Well, that's the that's the first track off your new album, recording as Smut Ith. uh, um, Rollback kicks in. Bertie Ann, I've got a guitar solo with Bertie Ann. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the message, Ian, and thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, if I haven't already, I'll be in touch about um, if, uh, for some reason pursuing this fruitless Marillion car search that we're about. <laughs> I don't, how did it even begin? I can't remember now. Uh, it's because I watched I a late night YouTube oh. video of them on top of the pops, and it was embarrassing. That's that's how it all started. <laughs> As as so many things do, is it, is it you just watching music videos while it you is, brush your teeth? It is. It's it's teeth brushing old eighties bad music videos and live performances. That's what it usually is. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do this. What week. else did you send me? What did you say? Oh yeah, you sent me a picture of that portaloo mount sort of parked on wheels on a perilously oh. angled hillside. Well, yeah, that's what well, that's where I flew back from. I was doing a corporate job and in Spain. Um, haven't done one for a long time, uh, but um, we were we, we we had to get up to the top of a mountain in for dawn to start shooting, and there was a portaloo oh. up there for the crew to what? use. Well, they, they you know oh, they, so they hired your it. crew had organised. Yeah, that. that it had been dropped off, and it was the most amazing piss vista slash poo vista. If if you were to poo or we with the door open, looking out over the top of this this um, this rock, it was incredible. <laughs> With the sun filtering yeah. through the trees, and I just it made me giggle, so I thought I'd send you a picture. Yeah, um, it did make me to giggle, but all I could imagine was last of the summer wine with Foggy going for a poo and then it <laughs> rolling off down the hillside because Compo had released the handbrake or something. But. Composto, yeah, exactly. Composto. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a Spanish massive enthusiast of, uh, of rotting matter uh, in order to <laughs> stop man made fertilizers. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> sorry, clanging. Do you know what I saw the other day? Yeah. So I don't know, this is a complete non sequitur, but um, I saw, uh, when was it, last Sunday, the Sunday before? Uh, I uh, saw, obviously, there were some cars going, coming from a banger rally, I suppose. Okay. And uh, questioning intonation, not sure what they were doing, but yeah, I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, I saw a couple of, a couple of, you know, obviously bangers on the back of, uh, of, trucks one of which was a an original mondeo and i think um they're quite popular they were quite popular with bangers weren't they, they were one of those cars are sort yeah. of freakishly strong they are yeah the other one surprised me separate lorry different it wasn't even with the other one in convoy or anything um was a uh, late model Celica. really the the wedgie the wedgie one the wedgie angular the last one that was one. really nice to drive the last one that we got here yeah okay a sort of nice lightweight one Okay. And I, was, I was like, I mean, there's no reason why that wouldn't be a banger, but at the same time, it seems somehow unlikely it's because it felt like very, very light. Yeah, that car, and like that might Su- sort of be perceived as flimsiness, but maybe not. Coupes seem to be quite good at bangers. They they love a Supra. Do they? They love they love a Mark III Supra. They're supposed to be incredibly strong, but yet the back window is massive, and of course they take the windows out. Mm. So it always troubles me as to how that can possibly be a good banger car. But they are. Supposed to be really good, wow. really good. Yeah, huh. yeah. I'm, unfortunately, a lot of them have been killed on the on the short oval and all that. On the short oval, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the crucible, isn't That's... it? It's it's always a it's always the 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 the, vo- the narration of a snooker championship, but the crucible. It be you could do the same thing with with banger racing. I think brutal banger racing, but the gravelly voice. Very shortly, here we go. Yes. Taz and the boys are moving in in the long wheelbase Jaguar XJ. And then over across on the left there, you've got your Buick Sabre, which seems to have suffered some appalling damage in a previous race, but nevertheless, it's got enough energy to go on. He's obviously a bit wheezy because he's just <laughs> ran up the stairs into the little commentary <laughs> booth from having a little cheeky little embassy at the bottom of the stairs. Anyway, uh, so it's all going to go down here. There's a... There's a Mark 1 Granada. 
Looks in incredible condition, but sadly it's going to perish on the short oval in the next 12 minutes. So let's see how it all pans out, shall we, on that side of things. <laughs> the the short oval yes. as a sort of metonym for banger racing generally is is one of those ones. It's I was talking to someone about this the other, the other week, that writing about cars yeah. is rife with those where... Have you ever seen there's a Twitter account called Second Mentions, Mm-mm. which pulls up pulls up writers and journalists on on when they'll you know they'll sort of um, they'll say something like Bono has opened a new hotel in Dublin the sunglasses loving front man and oh, you go no. sunglasses loving front man <laughs> but it's classic Second Mention it's like oh you can't use Bono again you've just said Bono you've got to say something else but the car world is terrible for it. We know things like the Blue Oval. Oh, yes. The Three-Pointed Star. Yeah. And then by extension, using where a company is from to... You as can't a stand it. For you, the, you're going to mention it drives Norfolk, me nuts. aren't you? You're going to mention Lotus. Well, I was going to... It's always... It's always that. Spokespeople from Hethel say... But it wouldn't be that, would it be? Hethel says, and you go, Hethel, Hethel doesn't say anything. Hethel's a frigging village. What are you talking about? Hethel's it's nonsense, an old woman but... that sweeps a doorstep. <laughs> Hethel? Yeah. Yeah. But that's it. It's also when they go, they'll they they sort of slightly. They've started saying Gaiden for Land Rover, and you sort of go, well, they're kind of based there, but also in Solly Hole. But then I suppose that's the factory. What what are you at? What are you getting well, at? Yeah, where's where, the head where, office where's this these going? days? Where's this going? I know it's really that's the thing. It's just like you're just stretching it to you're stretching it to breaking point. Uh, just anyway, as, 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 since we're also on this it's a lazy lazy tropes of car journalism, I'm a bit bored now with teases. I saw yes. end of last week Volkswagen teases new small electric car. And I was like, well, "Stop teasing it! What are you doing? Yeah, oh, you've got smelly doors. Ugh, look at you. Ugh, you've got a really smelly ugly doors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they're teasing it, aren't they? It's not nice. Oh, it's trolling. You know, uh, VW stones. are trolling their new model. Trolls but yet to be born <laughs> model. They're already trolling it. Yeah, you're not going to be. That was in one of the. In one of the reports about that new small Volkswagen Group electric car, which I'm quite interested in just because I think it's coming in 2025, which is when the lease will be up on my E-Up, which I presume they'll stop making. It's all about you, isn't it, Richard? It's all about you and your leases. Me, 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 me. I've got that. I I discovered uh, quite recently this idea of the main character syndrome where, you know, you sort of view yourself as, as as the central character in this movie of the whole world. That you live in, but I was sort of like, well, surely everyone does that. I mean, that's just sort of you. You can only see things from your own points of view, literally. So, oh, don't start don't that. Understand. Anyway, it's not the time for philosophical, philosophical <laughs> debate because I've got a terrible hangover. So, um, but yeah, I, I just I was reading where they, they're building. They're going to build this new small electric car in Spain, and they're building a new battery factory down there. And one of the reports, one of the car websites, referred to it as a gigafactory. And I was like, can we just knock this off right now? There is no such thing as a gigafactory. It's a factory. That's it. Tesla uses the word gigafactory because they like to make stuff up. But that is not an actual word to describe a thing. A battery factory is called a battery factory. a factory of batteries, yes. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, I'll, got um, that off my chest. Yeah. Um, that's... That's all I really need to say I, on that side of things. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm nervous that the, if there's been any aeroplane sounds coming from my mic, I, I've, I've just realised there might have been some um, some jet action going overhead. But it's probably John Travolta. It's probably. It's probably Travolta. He's got, yeah. he's got a terrible craving for <laughs> langoustines, and he's hot-footing <laughs> to the Norfolk coast going to at Scotland. low level. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. a, I don't know where a, things come He's from. flying around the perimeter of the of the UK, but with a very long telescope. <laughs> one, uh, <laughs> maybe he's got Nick. Ca- Can Nick Cage fly, or is that just in films? I'm not sure. <laughs> he could fly with his really long leather jacket, like <laughs> like, one, like one of those flying squirrels that jumps out of a tree yeah. and uses all the all the slack skin <laughs> to just suddenly take flight. It's just in the in the, the what do they call it the. Ramp thing that goes down at the back of a Hercules going, thanks John, and he gives him an exaggerated salute, but he just drops backwards out of it with his leather coat Oh, I bet on. he does that. But Nick, you haven't got a parachute. I don't need one. Uh, it's so true. He'd be so confident, wouldn't he? He would just do that. Yeah. But Cage, yeah, I, yeah. I think we've talked about it before, but yeah, Cage has been seen around the UK, hasn't he? Well, yeah, because he used to live He used to live where I'm going to live, yeah. in Bath or Bath. Are you buying uh, Nicholas and- Cage's old house that he got bored of? It has got a lot of 
horrible leather jackets in the wardrobe when we looked around. Uh, so, you know, has it? <laughs> might, <laughs> just about the curtains. The curtains are all made of what looks like sort of plasticky leather. Uh, it's a strong look. Leather it's quite wardrobe. a goth thing to do that. Do you, uh, what, it's, black leather curtains would be an incredibly goth thing to have. I don't know whether I don't like it's that ever been idea. attempted. I don't like that idea. Um, oh, I don't say I like it, but I'm just thinking if you're a goth, you'd probably be quite into it. Like I like this time of year as the weather starts to warm up. It's been quite nice and warm the past few days, and I love seeing sort of gloomy goths in hot weather because they're kind of going, I'm not taking the coat off, man, just not doing it. Oh, I'm but you're, mar- you're marinating. You're just marinating inside. Yeah. yeah, but if you ever go down to Camden Town or somewhere, you can just still catch the odd goth wandering about, trudging, not wandering, they trudge about because they're goths. That, that's true. You've, in fact, you've just reminded me, talking of um, that sort of thing, uh, of, of Bristol, the eternally 90s city. I, I, uh, in, in Gone in 60 Seconds, uh, Angelina Jolie's got dreads. Oh! She's got dreads and they're sort of bleached. I think they're bleached white or, or light silver or something odd. Yes. So, I again, she could have been... Nick Cage probably was filming that, constantly thinking, I'm going to move to Bath soon. And then Angelina Jolie was like, oh, well, I've got parentage in Bath because, you know, I'm a little bit 90s, so hence why I've got my dreads. And so maybe God in 60 Seconds was actually filmed in Bath. That would have been brilliant. Or Bristol. <laughs> would have been fantastic. Very hilly. Oh, very. A lot of, lot of, very, lot of clutch, clutch action. Oh, a lot. If you're a, in a man. An awful yeah. lot. Um, and now, I was funny enough, I was out last night uh, with an old, old friend of mine who has, for the past while I've been living in Bristol and um, has, has moved back to London and I, I said to her I went, actually you know uh, I, a mate and I have got this a theory that Bristol is uh, Britain's most 90s city <laughs> and she just went oh my god yes that's one of the reasons I've moved away I was so tired of it really? and she just went through this list of the yeah she just went oh my god oh, it's, like, it's just like white people's dreads and Greenpeace t-shirts and she just went oh, just, it's really boring after a while <laughs> she got quite ranty about it like, so, oh, okay. oh so we hit the nail on the head you. we absolutely hit the nail on from the from an actual Bristol resident well former now Bristol resident but someone who lived there it was two nine. Uh, is still trying to sell their flat there is is um, yeah is confirmed all of our suspicions is that so, reason um, for sale yeah. in the advert selling flat because yeah. area ha- two nineties <laughs> for me two nineties <laughs> need to move somewhere need to move about thirty years forward in time uh, yeah I, I so Bristol uh, I noticed this last week in the, those local elections Bristol voted to get rid of their mayor. Like just to scrap the idea of having a mayor, oh. which is I don't, is that a very nineties thing? Because having cities having mayors sort of came back, didn't it? And yeah, but Bristol have clearly gone. No, no, no I don't no, want no. that. We didn't have that in the nineties. They they they'd vote in someone from BBC Six Music to be their mayor if there was going to be a mayor. Like Gideon, what's his face? Gideon Co. Um, Gideon Co. Yeah. Gideon Co. No, who's Giles Peterson? He's yes. sort of quite nineties, isn't he? Because he feels like he's always on a gap year. He's just brought you some CDs back. Yes, he has stuff that you haven't heard before. So he's yeah, yeah he's the he, yeah because he's been to Goa. Exactly, he is he is ultimate gap year guy. Because yeah. <laughs> he must be in his fifties. Oh, he uh, and he's still on a gap I year. Think he probably is. <laughs> yeah, there's some good going. Well done. He's got a Charles very loose fitting um, knitted jumper, which ordinarily wouldn't suit anybody, but he seems to m- amazingly carry it off. To mm. Never washed it though. It's not it's never washed. Been washed. No, it's not washed. Um, I think he's also got some kind of like a poncho with kind of Aztec stuff knitted into it. Oh, Aztec poncho. That is Aztec that is poncho. peak Bristol. Yes, <laughs> peak Bristol. <laughs> well, there we go. Giles Peterson, Bristol, your new mayor. Don't scrap the position. Just give it to Giles Peterson, and there'll be so many music festivals and so many didgeridoos being played on street corners. Well, there's a, there's a music festival every mind. week. That's one of his policies. There's 52 music yes. festivals. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you're not having your bins collected anymore, but there's going to be an incredible world music symposium every single <laughs> Friday and Saturday. A load of flutes one week, and then <laughs> some sort of steel drum expo the week after. Incredible! I feel. I think I feel I like want we've to just move. gone through some kind of mad greatest hits this week. We just talked about Bristol and Marillion, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like we're we're just now circling back on ourselves in some strange way. Um, we should probably, we should. on that note, 
just you know fold this up and put we it back where learn. it came from oh and before i forget uh, yeah. my, my my dad who said i saw a, a modern version of what i thought to be a ds19 citroen the other week it mm. was a c6 he's confirmed it oh. lots of people have gone surely it's a c6 it was yeah he, i think he's quite fascinated I meant to say and, Good. and two, there was our local village fate last week, and my brother did bring his stationary engines along yeah. that he'd restored. <laughs> and I've, I've been inundated. I've been, uh, I have been... I, <laughs> people making smutty insinuations about your brother. I have been inundated, inundated with comments from people saying, didn't see any attachments, didn't see any reciprocating sort of like whittled wooden <laughs> fallacies. <laughs> <laughs> did see, yeah, did see a, a, a did see a, a, a rolling pin covered in slick fifty piston <laughs> each. <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, no, this one was this one was for the kids. This this village fake. But my brother, honestly, seeing the glee on my brother's face, getting a, a Rustin Hornsby wartime era engine put- putting along on the. On on the on did the he, ground, it was really it was quite war- charming because he hasn't did changed. He, did he get it running and then go? It'll do that all day. Oh yeah, completely. <laughs> That's it. It was Excellent. it was I mean, hopping. You can't not, it was surely. hopping across the floor, a bit like a kid that needs a piss and it's clamping, <laughs> clamping themselves, going. I, I, I'm not going, but I do need to go. I'm not uh. going though. I'm doing that little sort of like el- elfy skippy hop. That's what it was doing. And he was just he, he had his hands uh. in his pockets and he just looked at me and he went, "That's mint. Look at it. It's running perfectly." It's just uh, really no it's, idle. It's, it's, it's nice to just find And he brought along, get this, he, he brought along a gallon of paraffin because he says, yeah, you start it on the petrol and I reckon within mm. within a minute I can switch it over to paraffin. And he did it and then just stood back, hands in pockets with a rag in his back pocket and just went, <laughs> there you go. Look at that. And it was just... <laughs> and I'm just there just going... The, just the, 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 the sense of being pleased with yourself at something like that yeah, must be immense. That's what it is. And I, I think it, it is that simple pleasure that I see he gets from it. and But what was lovely is those engines came from my neighbour who's been quite unwell recently, and he's had those engines for about 50-odd oh. years. Oh, and uh, he brought them okay. there to show him. He said this is the first time they've run since the 70s. One of them has to, has wow. runs, And my brother got them both going. And then they started to talk about the fact that they're painted in the correct grey because they're both World War era production models, so they didn't have any maroon paint. Wow. And at that point, I might have slunk off for a coffee um, <laughs> before they started getting their whittled rolling pins out. And, yeah, and what, what, is this ivory? Yes, I know it's not physically <laughs> physical, but look at the look at the detail work on the bell. It's just <laughs> exquisite. This came from a tribe in Papua New Guinea, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <didn't... clears throat> of course, they didn't have a steam engine or anything like that. They just used to <laughs> use a sort of mechanism with a waterfall and a, and a rudimentary water wheel using big leaves. Don't you just to power is it? it? Me? I absolutely <clears throat> love the word rudimentary or rudimental. Rudimentary, yeah, love it. Rudimentary, rude I mentary. Yeah, better that's than well I am. Another one for the list. Yeah, yeah. that's. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, well, before we go, we've got three things to tell you. Yeah. They are one, uh, Johnny has a solo YouTube channel. It's called The Late Plate Show, in which he looks at cars registered right towards the end of the model's <laughs> production run. Uh, the most recent video. It's a V-Reg Rover 600. You ha- Lovely. If you don't like that, you will like The Late Brake Show, which has got lots of uh, videos about lots of cars, including, we think, uh, one of the uh, review T- of the VW Multivan. T7 Multivan. Will be up by now, T7 Multivan. Oh, yeah. Um, and it. loads of other good stuff. Uh, Audi Quattro Barn Find is a, a recent highlight, I think. Isn't Why it? is it that everything you say always sounds like a John Peel session? When I say it, it doesn't. I don't know. When I think I'm slowly, I'm slowly merging into my own impression of John Peel. It might be because I'm a bit claggy again. <laughs> and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and the, the low register. The third thing I can say is Will I Am's already started. Um, his project to where he takes an immaculate Mitsuoka Vute and turns it into a Micra. <laughs> Incredible idea. Well done, Will. He's so ironic. So ironic. Uh, right, the second thing I've got to tell you is that we have merch. So if you want some Smith & Sniff t-shirts, mugs, stickers, we're going to get some new stickers, I think, aren't we? We're, talking about we're trying. Time. We'll... we'll coming up with some new designs but in the meantime if you'd like an Otsot Ot t-shirt or a sport mug or something like that well uh, go to the latebreakshow.com and look under the shop where you'll also find late break merch as well and the third thing i've got to tell you is paul mccartney's real first name is james really yeah now i, was, I only McCartney. found that earlier the day and i sort of thought 
I thought, does everyone know that? And it's just me, or does no one know that because it's never mentioned because his name's Paul? I didn't know that. Well, there we go. That's how he was christened, anyway. Okay. I, uh, I probably should have done some checking up on that, but I believe that to be the case. Uh, d- uh, <laughs> write in if it's not on that or anything else that piques your interest in this podcast. It's hello at smithandsniff.com. Hello at smithandsniff.com. Smith and Sniff, all in words. No ampersands. No, it's a shame um, they don't allow them. We don't allow them, so no. we don't use them. I yeah, love an ampersand. Yeah, I do. I do. Thanks for listening, well, though, everybody. It's been quite low energy, yes, hasn't it? That's <laughs> a low energy exit. <laughs> unlike <laughs> unlike God You in flew in seconds. on the red eye on Brian Air, yeah. and I went out boozing last night, and as a consequence, this has been a low energy production of Smith & Sniff, but thank you ever so much for listening. <laughs> low pressure, too. Maybe a bit more. Low pressure, yes. This is very, it's mainly for the economy and the talk, <laughs> not for the performance. Um, next week, a bit more pep in our step, perhaps. But until then, goodbye. Uh, goodbye from me as well. I'm Johnny Smith. You're a bit more up tempo than I'm Johnny Smith. <laughs> Listen, I'm Johnny Smith. One week, I'm just going to get like get someone else to do it, like a woman or something, and see if anyone notices. Well, that's a great idea. Should we get our wives? We'll get to my just daughter say, to do I'm, it. Yeah, we should do. Should we get our kids to say I'm Richard Porter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about fish no from Mer- and, and I'm reason. fish from Marillion. <laughs> Oh man, that would be amazing. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just completely blindside people just go, <laughs> I'm Chris Porter, I'm Johnny Smith, and I'm Fish from Marillion, but then he's not in the episode. <laughs> and he's not mentioned at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop recording. Do you actually know any other Marillion songs?